Poker Tour. The biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. The WPT is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With millions of dollars on the line, it's time for these four players to live the dream of fame, fortune, and the one thing money can't buy, a WPT title. Tonight on the World Poker Tour. It's the hottest tournament in Vegas, and there's no stopping till we crown a champ. It's the conclusion to the Bellagio Cup 3, so shuffle up and deal. Welcome back to Las Vegas and Bellagio Cup 3. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. We're well on our way to naming our next WPT champion. Here's a quick recap of what's happened so far. Yeah, man, let's go! It's a trash coffer's paradise. Maybe. It's going to be fireworks. No one's going to really want to back down from anybody. That's him, man. This ain't the internet, son. Kevin Saul has won $3 million in about the last three pots. God, I love deep stack poker. Looks like my luck has just run out. The Russian out in sixth place. The pool man's pump finally broken. And Vince, incredibly, Kevin Saul, who went down to low man and almost out of this tournament in sixth place, has to climb back up to where he's the chip leader. All right, Kevin Saul is back in the driver's seat with 4.5 million in chips. Let's see if he can keep it together. Season pro Mike the Mouth Matisau is looking good with a little over 3.2 million. And Shaniac may have to start playing like a maniac because he's in third place with 1.9 million. While the young phenom, Danny Wong, he's got to be feeling the pressure. He's on the short stack with a little less than 1 million. We started four days ago with 535 players. We are down to four, and you can just sense the pressure is mounting with every decision right now. $1.3 million goes to the winner, but Vance, each of these guys desperately want to capture a WPT title. They know the opportunity is here right now to do just that. Action's on Danny Wong, making his second WPT final table appearance with a jack-10 of diamonds. Danny's on the short stack right now with less than a million bucks. This one's fine. But he is going to raise it right here. Makes it 120,000 to go. Shaniac, Mr. Schlager, the 30-year-old out of Santa Monica, California, has a king-queen yeah. with the button. He's in position. Not a bad hand. He's going to make the call here. And did the soul man, Kevin, who will lay down a nine deuce and the mouth with a seven five of hearts. And he quickly calls. Well, there's 300,000 in the pot. Cost him 80,000 more to make the call, and he does so. So three-way action here. Here comes the flop. And Mattis Allen flopped a gut shot straight draw. Danny Wong with the open-ended straight draw. The mouth is going to bet $125,000. Not a big bet, but Danny Wong with the open-ended straight draw. Danny raised before the flop. Just wondering why a guy would lead out and bet into a pre-flop raiser if he really had a big hand. Notice what Danny just did right there. Glanced over at Shane just to get an indication as to whether or not he feels he will play the pot. I love that about this kid. He's got great poker instincts. That's what the great players do. And well, that was just a very quick glance, and it seems like he got the information he needed just by that. He's going to move it up. He is, Vance. He's coming right over the top for 450000 here. Shane going Listen. out. Mattis out quickly folding as well. So just great poker instincts there by Danny Wong to come over the top right there with just an open and straight draw. And Vince, this kid is a poker player. I'm telling you, he finished second in this very tournament last year. And here he is with four players left fighting yet again to win it. Graduate of UC Riverside. He was going to be a stockbroker. But decided, you know what, there's too much gamble of that. I'm going to become a poker player instead. Well, we've got some great players in the audience watching this final table. The poker brat himself, Phil Helmuth, Aralibus Vulgaris, Nick Schulman, former WPT champion, Steve Wong, WPT runner-up. A lot of good players in the house. Shaniac lays down a 5-3 very quickly, and now the Soul Man with a pretty big hand, King Queen of Spades. It is a big hand, especially when you're just up against the blinds. Yep, I'll bring him right by. So Kevin is going to raise the pot here. Going to make it 125000 to go with the King Queen of Spades. Mouth quickly folding. Only one to beat is Danny Wong, who's in the big blind. He's got a 9-8. 
Well, his favorite hand in poker is a 6-7 suited, he says. Here he's got a notch higher than that, a 9-8. Well, these kind of hands are nutcrackers. You can crack the nuts if you happen to hit. Well, he's Very got, deceptive hands. He's got 40000 out there. Going to cost him another 85000 to make this call. It's a slight investment. Do you want to gamble here? That's the question. Danny Wong down to the short stack at this point with 1.3. He's making the call here. Going to gamble with the 9-8. You're up against an aggressive opponent who likes to continue betting so you can make some money if you get lucky. Oh, it's come king 8-8, oh, wow. and you talk about lucky oh. here. Danny Wong has flopped three eights. He's going to check it. The beauty of it is that Kevin Saul has flopped the top pair of kings. And he's going to bet right here with the two kings, 200,000. He's supposed to bet here. He's got top pair. Absolutely. I don't blame him. The question is, is Danny just going to make the call with three eights, or is he just going to raise it right now? To raise or not to raise, that's the question. I mean, he doesn't know that Kevin has a king in his hand. So you might want to just call here in hopes that Kevin continues to bet. You just want to extract the most amount of chips at this point. Now, the problem is, if you just call here, your opponent knows you've got something. Probably a king or an eight, or how can you call, or a small pair? Well, he's going for the raise option, Vince. Looks like he's going to make it a half a million to go, so he raised it 300000 here. Come on, in. I call. Kevin quickly goes all in, and Danny jumps up and calls him very quickly. And Danny is elated right now. I'm eight. I'm eight. Worked out perfect for him. Looks like he might be making a move with that pot. Well, the crowd hears about the three of a kind, and they get excited. Danny. Oh, he's rubbing his hands together, Vince. He can taste this double up, but it's not over. Kevin can catch a king to win this pot where he makes kings full. He could come queen-queen where he made queens full and win the pot. Or he could catch two running spades and win this pot. Well, Danny loving this. Uh, he's getting down as low as he can. When you have this kind of hand, you want to see the cards come out. You want to see every move that's happening. And Vince, you have to suspect this is where experience wins out. When a guy raises you in that spot, and there's no sense re-raising him. He can't call you if he is bluffing and he has nothing. But certainly, he can bust you or damage you badly if he's got an eight in his hand, and that was the situation here. Now, if a disaster should happen for Danny Wong, he would be out in fourth place. Yeah, be positive. It would take a pretty big suck out, but we've seen them before on the World Poker Tour. There's the turn card. It's a three of hearts. So the three eight still holding up. 19 to 1 favorite to win. Danny Wong is just staring at that board intently. And right now, Kevin Saul must catch a king to win this pot. That's it. He's got to make kings full to do it. It's never easy. But he doesn't get it. An eight comes off. Danny Wong has made quads to take down this pot. Talk about overkill. Well, Vance, what a pot that was. And what a pickup for Danny Wong. He doubles up. Nice that, Danny. Well, Danny has all the momentum right now, and Kevin, the soul man, could be crashing again. I mean, Kevin has worked so hard to get the chip lead back, but now he's barely hanging on to it. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action in just a few moments. I think Danny Wong's the best player at the table beside me. I had heard that, oh, Danny Wong, he raises every hand. He's maniac. Oh, I'm like, okay, whatever. But he's definitely the best player left beside me because... He's slow, he's methodical, he takes his time on his decisions. So, uh, yeah, I think Danny Wong's the person to beat in this tournament. Hello, Mr. Cunningham. Alan, it's a big pot out there, buddy. I'm all in. Don't be scared. <laughs> I call. Only a donkey would make that call. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're in Las Vegas for Bellagio Cup 3. And right now, Layla has corralled the poker brat himself, Phil Helmuth. Hey, guys, I am here with Phil, who's out to support Mike, I take it, right? Absolutely. I mean, I've been rooting for Mike for a long time, and uh, 
And he and I have become better and better friends over the years. And I don't talk to anybody else in the poker world mm -hmm. to the level I talk to Mike. Right. And um, we both think that, you know, playing a very patient game is important. I mean, I'm just, I'm here to support him. Right, right. Who do you think Mike's competitor is in this final table? Who's his biggest competition? I think Kevin's incredibly reckless. And he had 4.5 million in chips. And he just power blasted them all away for no reason. The blinds are like this small. Mm -hmm. And he just gave away 4 million in chips. He's like a time bomb. Someone like that who's power flushed all those chips away will power flush them away again. I think he's going to give them all to somebody. And then that somebody is who Mike's going to have to contend with. Vince, it's not often you see Phil Helmuth talking about something other than himself. You know, Phil said that the, you know, he and Mal talked for about an hour. The question is, was anybody listening? <laughs> Let's go to the action. Mr. Wong with the button and the king nine of spades. Nice hand, nice position being on the button. He's getting chips out. He's going to make a raise going up to $120,000 into Maniac, Shaniac. Well, Shane looks down at an ace Ooh. queen. And it's been the downfall of many here on the WPT. Maybe Shane's been watching a lot of shows because he just limps in and calls. And now Kevin with a king five of clubs in the big blind. Already slightly invested. Got that gigantic hat that looks like it could be Shaq's hat or something. And this guy likes to play about every single pot. We've seen that so far. Gets himself into trouble sometime, but he has a lot of talent and he's going to make this call. So three-way action here. There's the burn and here's our flop. It's Jack 10-4 with two hearts. Two players have gut shot straight draws. Shaniac has quickly checked, yielding to Kevin Saul, who's got to put chips out there with just King High. Yes, $200,000. Well, what's new? Once again, <laughs> Kevin betting with the worst hand. Danny Wong going out, and now Shaniac with the inside straight draw. What's he going to do with it, Mike? All in. Whoa. Wow. He's going to pull the trigger for all his chips. And Vince, that's a play that you can only make with a hand like this against a super aggressive player like Kevin Saul. This is playing the player, not playing the hand. Shane doing it to perfection right there. Yeah, Kevin quickly ejecting his hand. No moss. And just like that, the former waiter gets a very nice tip right there, sweeping in that pot. All right, four either. players remain. Everyone has chips. And recognize the fact that the blinds are just 20,000 and 40,000. Yet every player has over $2.4 million in chips. It's what we call a deep stack tournament. Everybody's got chips to play with. Back to the table, Shane quickly folding his hand. And now Kevin Saul with an ace deuce. That's good enough for him to raise it. He pops it up, makes it 111,000 to go. And look at Mattisau, the mouth, looking over at Kevin, staring him down because he's got the octopuses, pair of eights, the snowmen. He said he was going to play conservative Vance, and he certainly is here, just calling with two eights here yes. against the ever-aggressive Kevin. And Danny Wong going out with the Jack Deuce. So the mouth playing the eights, the mid-pair, pretty slow here. Let's see a flop. Queen 9-5 didn't help Mattisau. He quickly checks. Well, when you check to Kevin Saul, you better duck because the bullets are going to come flying. He's getting chips out with his nothing, just ace high. He is going to make the continuation bet. First time I've seen yet, man. And with two overcards out there, Mattisau dumping the snowman. He's going to show the eights. Mattisau, usually with tremendous instincts, this time just a little bit wrong. He thought he was beat at that point. Lays the hand down proudly. Well, Vince, because of the structure and the low blinds right now with everybody having so many chips, Manasau just not looking to gamble at all. Thinks he's got plenty of time to wait for hands. He thinks this young kid's going to implode. So this is sort of a dynamite final table. Who's going to blow up first? All the best players in the world know I'm a good player. Them young kids on the internet might think I'm an idiot because I play like on the internet. Screw it. I don't want to talk about it. But they got to beat me when they have to look me in the eye. It's a big difference than sitting behind a computer hitting buttons. This is the Bellagio Cup 3. It's a $10,000 buy-in, so beginners welcome. The first year we had less than 100 entries, this year we have 535. The prize money has become quite lucrative. First place is uh, 1342000 And with the exposure to the World Poker Tour, it'll just get bigger and bigger. So the Bellagio Cup 3 about to continue. We started four days ago with 535 players. 
We are down to four, and one of these guys is going to take home over $1.3 million tonight. Well, what a volatile night it has been for Kevin Saul in seat number one. Came in as the chip leader, went to the short stack, but now he is back. How am I still alive? Mike Manis out of the mouth, also with about $3 million. Back to the table. It is going to be on Kevin Saul. This time, he's going to look down to an uneventful 10-8 offsuit. This kid's nickname could be ATC for any two cards because he loves <laughs> to play. He's calling this one. And now right behind him, Madison with a very seductive hand. Queen Jack of Clubs with the button, but just calling. Again, calls with a better hand. Not going to play it fast. Danny Wong now with an AC Deucey of Diamonds. He's going to call in the small blind. And Shane with a jack three offsuit says, give us the flop. So we have four-way action here. All four players involved in this hand. Here's the flop. Oh, and look at this. Ace, do six. A huge hand for Danny Wong. Aces and deuces on the flop. And he is first to act. He is reaching for chips here. And think with the aggressive Kevin Saul sitting behind him that you go ahead and just check this. Let a guy lead at it, but no. Danny going to lead right out. Bet's 110,000. Shane going out, and Kevin is quickly going to fold, as does Matisau. So right there, Danny Wong chasing his victims away. But let me explain. He's thinking to himself, look, if I check, yeah, maybe Kevin will bet. I'll come over the top, and if he doesn't have a hand, he's got to fold it. Maybe the smarter way to do it is I'll bet. No one's going to think I have an ace. Maybe they think I have a little piece of that. And Kevin Saul, the victim here, might try to chase me out with a raise. That's how I want to get all his chips. But this time, it bites Danny Wong because he could get no action with that one. I feel very confident in my game. I truly believe confidence is one of the main keys, if not the top one, two, three keys in being successful as a poker player. You have the right mentality, confidence, focus. You have to have your head straight. You can do good things if you're a talented player. I was supposed to become a stockbroker. I already had the job locked up, and I made a really big score at the Bellagio Cup, and that kind of jump-started my poker career. I decided to go back and tell them I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to become a stockbroker or financial advisor anymore. I feel like it's very important for me to win. I want to win real badly. I have the desire to win. I have enough knowledge, and I definitely want to get that monkey off my back and try to win my first title. Andy's is still $5,000. Blige at 20 and 40. Wood is going to take home $1.3 million. Back to the table. Around to the human Q-tip. Kevin Saul. He's got a pair of kings, the Kokomos. And he just limps in, trying to trap Mattisau there, but Mattisau quickly checking right behind him yeah. with the 9-6. Here's our flop. Ace, four, three. Kevin checking again. Mattisau not going to bite. He checks. Three clubs out there. Oh, and look at that. A ten of club on the turn. Nut flush for Kevin Saul. Looking back now. Does he come out of the woods now and finally have to force a bet? Looks like he's getting chips out. But look at this. The mouth folding his hand before Kevin can even put in his chips. How obnoxious. I can't believe I'm back here. Well, it is very obvious that Mike Matisau is going with his strategy. How horrifying my cards are. You know, he's loading up on his meds, trying to calm himself. I mean, he is like an animal, lying in wait, stalking his kill. That $1.3 million is still up for grabs. Who's going to win? You'll find out right after this. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're in Las Vegas for Bellagio Cup 3. And Vince, as they say, styles make fights. We've got a big-time gambler here versus three guys sitting in wait. Well, you're right. Kevin Saul is sticking the jabs, gaining points, stealing pots. But will he get caught here tonight? We will see. Going back to the table, Danny Wong quickly folding. And now Shaniac with the button. He's got queen, seven of spades. Going to make an $80,000 raise. Kevin Saul finally laying a hand down out of the small blind. But Mike Mattis out behind him with an A6. Appearing interested. Well, Mike is going to make the call here. He's out in front right now with the ace high. We've got two-way action here between Mike and Shane. Here comes a flop. 10-5-4 rainbow. No help to anybody. And the mouth quickly checks it. And Shaniac 210. Getting chips out. He says 210,000. He makes the continuation bet, and he's going to win the pot because of it. 
Now look at Matisau. Look at the intensity. He is just trying to control his emotions. He knows he's going to get pickpocketed all night long playing this strategy, but he is waiting for the big punch. This is his strategy, and he's continuing it so far. Well, you're right, Vance. So far, he's been extremely patient. If those guys want to put him on talent, Vince, just turn up one of those Queen 7s and show it to him. Matisau might just blow up. Well, these guys know that Matisau is playing that game, too, so they're going to start taking advantage of it, just like Shane did there. Back down to the table. It's going to be on the mouth. He looks down at a 10-7 of clubs. Now, will he change gears here a little bit? Race. Well, so much for the conservative play. He's going to raise it right here. Makes it 125,000 to go with the 10-7. Danny Wong right behind him, though, with a real hand. Pair of jacks wired. It looks like Mike's made the wrong move here. <laughs> Danny considering what to do in a four-handed poker game. Wired pair of jacks, a huge hand. And yes, more chips are coming out. And he comes over the top, makes it 350,000 to go. Shane quickly folding. Q-tip with a miserable 6-5 won't play. And Madison mucking his hand, saying, why did I get out of line? All I had to do is play my solid tight game. My demons came out, and it backfired. Well, give him credit for recognizing that Danny would have a hand in that situation. Mike knows he's played conservative. He raised the pot. When somebody comes over the top of him, he's going to give him credit for having a hand here tonight. All right, big action game here tonight. Danny Wong looking down at a five deuce of diamonds. Won't play that. Over to Shane on the button. Looks down at a seven of spade. He just calls with it, limps in. Mixing up his game. And now Kevin Saul with a wired pair of fives also just going to call. Madison with just a six deuce offsuit. Happy to get the free flop here. Three way action. Here's our flop eight, seven, three. Shane hitting a pair of sevens there. Kevin has two fives, and he's going to lead out and bet with him. Comes in for 62,000. Yep, Mike Matisau quickly folding his nothing hand, but Shane with the pair of sevens going to make this call. Here's the turn card, a six of spades. This gives Shane the nut flush draw as well as the two sevens. Kevin, of course, with two fives and the open end straight draw now. Well, he quickly checked it, and now Shane with the nut flush draw, pair of sevens. Has the best hand and the best draw. Yeah, you gotta bet this. One point. And it's 120,000. Not a real big bet into a pot that's got over 260,000 in it. But Kevin's got the open ended. And he is gonna stick around. He's made the call. So over a half million dollars in the pot right now. Coming down to the river, who's gonna get lucky? There it oh, is. The dream card oh. for Kevin. So he's made the straight Seven. and checks. I got there on the river, Shane. Shane quickly turns up the two sevens. To his displeasure, he thought he was going to get a bet yeah, by Shane, but no, he slowed down and checks it. I'm surprised that he wouldn't bet on the river right there. You know, he's such an aggressive player. He's liable to get paid off if he makes a bet on the river there. Well, I think he would have, but, you know, he made a beautiful quick check there. Like, that card's just not going to help me. Begging for Shane to make a bet. But Shane just discouraging him with the check right behind him. I mean, you win a nice pot there, but you're saying to yourself, ah, oh, gosh, did I blow that? It's still anyone's game as the WPT from Bellagio continues right after this. Well, the thing with Mike Matisau is he talks a lot. And he has all these antics and all that stuff. He got yes! it! Fancy caught yes! the king! Yes! Look at this! One time! I think he's a good poker player. It's just that sometimes he just blows up. Another two outer I got beat with. Shows his emotions while he plays. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. And that's not good for his game. And other players can take advantage of it. The Bellagio Cup 3 continues from Las Vegas. Four players remain going after $1.3 million. They all got plenty of chips. Actions on Danny Wong, who has picked up a big hand, big slick, ace king. He's raised it up to 120 to go. Shane going out. Now over to Kevin Saul. He's in the small blind with the king six of spade. And it cost him another 100000 to make this call, but he is doing it. Now in the big blind, the mouth, Mr. Mike there with an ace ten. Mike's been relatively card dead here at this final table. Well, he's played ultra conservative. Waiting for these guys to make mistakes, and then he's looking over to his left, saying, how strong is he? Well, because of the WPT cam, we can see that Danny has him dominated. There is. 
Wow, he's going to raise with it. He's saying, I got some dead money with Kevin. And I think this guy on my left is bluffing, so I'm going to raise it. He has moved it up to 340000 to go. This could be a major mistake. Well, Mike finally picks up an ace-10. Ops to come over the top. Well, Mike has seen these guys. I mean, all night long, he has been pickpocketed. He's given that up. So now he's saying these guys aren't strong all the time. But little does he know, his timing is off right now. Let's see what Danny Wong is going to do with his ace-king now. As poker legend T.J. Cloutier likes to say, ace-king is nothing but a big drawing hand. What do you do now here with a guy who's played conservative all night long? You've got ace-king. He comes over the top of you in the three-handed pot. There is. He is going to re-raise it a half a million more here. Oh, he He's is. made it 840000 to go. Kevin quickly getting out. Mike Manisau squirming in his chair. Just thinking to himself, why couldn't I just play that solid tight game again? And he has to muck his hands. Reed is killing me. That's not I have it, If these guys keep coming over the top of Mike Manisau and taking the pots sure. away from him, you just wonder <laughs> how long his patience will last. Will he crack like an egg? Mike Madison quieted down. And Vince, we've got a new chip leader. It's Danny Wong. And Vince, you got to be impressed with the play of Danny Wong. Actually finished runner-up in this tournament a year ago. Got 561000 for that finish. He's looking to move up on it tonight. Got a great shot to do it, Vince. He's the big chip leader right now with $3.6 million. It's going to be on the 27-year-old Kevin Saul. He looks down to a queen eight offsuit. Well, ATC, any two cards? He's going to raise here with the queen eight. Makes it 112,000 to go. Into the mouth, with the mouth this time with a pretty big hand. Ace, queen, and the button. Well, Vince, he got his wrist slapped the last pot with the ace 10 offsuit when he re raised it. Here he's just going to call. So he's back in the conservative mode. Yeah, maybe he learned something. Danny Wong going out. Shaniac not going to play. So two-way action here between Kevin Saul and Mike Matisau. Mike with the ace-queen. Kevin with the queen-eight. Here comes a flop. A flop comes king-jack-ten oh, wow. with two diamonds. Mike Matisau has flopped the nuts the best hand possible. The ace-high straight. Unbelievable. Action's on Kevin. He's flopped an open-end straight draw. Oh, man, if you're mad as hell, you're loving this. You got a bet right in front of you. Kevin bets 163,000. Let's see how Mike's going to play it. He's got the best hand possible. There are two diamonds out there, meaning a potential flush draw. But Mike opts to just call here. He's going to try to reel him in, Vince. Well, the seven of diamonds comes off. Scare card for both players because a potential flush out there now. Kevin's going to check his open-end straight draw. Mike does have the queen of diamonds yep. to go along with his ace high straight. And the mouth is going to open up for a bet. It looks like $200,000 with his straight. Well, not a big bet into a pot that's got well over 600000 in it. See if Kevin sniffs it out properly, and indeed he does. Uh, Kevin didn't have a diamond. He's saying this guy's playing too tight. He wouldn't be monkeying around. I'm going to get out of here. Well, Mike Madison finally catching the flop there. Probably wishes he would have raised on the flop now. Good restraint he didn't raise before the flop because he chased his opponent away. And right there, he's going to take a pot, get some confidence back. Stay tuned. Bellagio Cup 3 will continue, and we're coming back in just a few moments. Are you good enough to be a WPT champion? Log on to WPT on GSN.com and see if you've got what it takes. Welcome back to that quiet little town known as Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton. And the Bellagio Cup 3 continues with four players. Well, we've got a great event here. Our current chip leader is Danny Wong. He's come down to four pros, fighting it out for over $1.3 million. All right, the very crafty Kevin Saul goes out. And the mouth, Mr. Matisau with an ace-10. All right. He's going to raise it. And he got burned on a short while back, but here it makes it 104000 to go. Well, you can't take certain hands personally. Raising on the button with the ace-10, and the guy that burned him when he had that ace-10 is Danny Wong, who's contemplating what to do right now with the king-queen. Yes, he is. Also a pretty good starting hand in the small blind. Now Danny's going to make the call. Now on Shaniac, who has an 8-7 in blind. 
I heard he has some money in there. Well, there's a lot of money out there, about 270000 Only going to cost him 64000 more to make the call. So he does so. And who would ever thought we'd had three-way action without Kevin Saul being involved? We got a new table, Captain. All right, here comes the flop. Oh, a 10-5 deuce. Nice one for Mattisau. Hitting top pair. Danny Wong checking. Shaniac checking. And Mattisau. Having flop top pair with top kicker is gonna bet here. Like he should with that flop. He bets 300,000. Uh, Danny Wong laying down the two over cards. And now Shaniac with a nothing hand. He goes out. Pretty good flop for that now, huh? The mouth is gonna show his Three hand hands. saying, when I bet, I have the goods. Well, Vince, they've seen that all night long. I think I had a backdoor gut shot draw or something. I swear to God, I told myself, if he re-raises me again, I'm shoving on the top of him. Me? Why did big I go, I ain't no punching bag around here. I might be an idiot, but one thing I ain't gonna do is get punched around. Well, it's easy to say you don't get punched around. You flop don't. top pair with top Your kicker. punches don't hurt. He might have thought they hurt, but they don't hurt. The mouth is now starting to yap it up. He is getting stronger. The first thing you gotta do is play great, and then you gotta hope that things fall in line. It's all about your chip position. These kids have no idea about what chip position is in poker. Chips is power. You don't give away your chip position on coin flips or stupid calls. I learned that the hard way. I used to play reckless too. You know, I was aggressive reckless just like they were. I got the three draw and the backdoor flush draw. You know, the only difference is, is I went broke six times. Mike Mattisau out in third place. And I have to learn the hard way. So, you know, a lot of these young kids that win a big tournament or they do real well and they get a hold of a lot of money at a young age. I'm like, please invest it. Please put a million, a half a million away where you can't touch it. Because I ain't met a poker player yet that ain't gone broke. <laughs> My game today will be patient. If I play patient and I just sit there and fold hands and fold hands and fold hands and fold hands, I can't lose today. I promise you. I can't lose today. You just don't raise me and I fold like that. You feel helmet. Oh boy. I mean, what do you think? Now using a little profanity here at the table. He is getting stronger. Just needling his good buddy Phil Helmuth in the house. Hey, Phil. <laughs> oh, it's good to see the mouth be himself again. Tongue coming out like he's having fun. Well, Vince, do you think his moods change any when he wins a pot versus when he loses one? <laughs> Just slightly. <laughs> oh, polar ride there with Mike Mattisau. It's on him once again. He's got King Jack of Clubs. And again, he's going to raise. Well, picking up a few hands here. Into Danny Wong with the 7 6. He folds. folds. Shaniac out. Will it be two in a row for the mouth? Kevin Saul in the big blind. Now he has King 10. Little does he know Mike Mattisau has King Jack. And he's going to make the call. So Mike Mattisau has him dominated right now. King Jack versus King 10. Here's our flop. Well, flop comes Queen 5 3 with two diamonds. No help to either player. Kevin checks, and Mattisau quickly checks right behind him, and now a 10 comes off. Beautiful card for Kevin Saul hitting his 10s. Well, he's made a pair of 10s. This gives Mike the open-end straight draw, however. And Kevin is going to bet the two 10s, makes it $170,000. Mattisau with the open-ended. He's not going anywhere. He has made the call. Nice pot developing. We're going to the river. So Mike needing to draw out now himself. Here comes the river. Oh, a king comes off. This gives Kevin Saul two pair, kings and tens. And it gives the mouth just what he might not want, a top pair with a jack kicker. And Kevin Saul, the human Q-tip, going to bet it 300000 Well, Vince, this is going to be a tough laydown for Mike Mattis out to make here, I believe. I mean, we know Kevin's just been aggressive, betting, betting, betting all week long here. Well, most likely you're going to donate when a king hits you on the river. you got a big kicker. Very tough to get away from this. This could make the mouth get very quiet once again if he makes this call. Does he have the discipline to lay this down? It's almost impossible, you would think. My call is 300. Oh, excuse me. It's not nothing yet. It is so tempting to call off your money here. Well, he's going to do it. Mike is going to make the call, and he's going to lose this Too pot. Bad. And Vince, in my view, Mike could have bet on the flop when there was about 250000 in the pot already. 
He probably would have won that had he made the continuation bet. Instead, he went on to not only lose that 250, but a 470,000 in addition to that because he called on the turn and he called on the river. They call what? And right now, he's back on mute. I have to say, sometimes that conservative play just doesn't pay off at the poker table. Four players remain. Good stuff going on. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. You look great. You look great. You look great. How do I look? Bad poker face? Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. That's the flowers. That's the flowers. Don't just watch the WPT, play the WPT. Visit WPT on GSN.com. I'd say playing well, you know, this is the most you can ask of yourself. Uh, if I play poorly, that's when it hurts. If I get unlucky after having played well, I won't have any regrets. But if I'm playing poorly and getting lucky, I guess uh, it doesn't hurt too much. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Four players continue the quest of $1.3 million here at Bellagio. Right now, Danny Wong is the chip leader with close to $3.6 million. Kevin Saul in second place with about $3.2 million. And the guy who had the chip lead just a moment ago, Mike Mattisau, now in third place with about $2 million. Shane Schlager in fourth place with one point eight. Shane quickly folding a jack six. Kevin Saul from Illinois going to fold Dolly Parton nine to five. Mike Mattisau, who is still simmering a little bit from the last pot that he lost, looks down at two aces and just limps in with him. Well, Danny Wong with eight deuce. Content to call it and see three cards. Here we go. Well, Mike hoping Danny would make a move at this pot. Now here comes the flop. King, queen, ten. Mike with the two aces bets 50,000. Into Danny, who nothing materializing for him, and he quickly folds. Oh, Vince. Here's back-to-back -back pots. One Mike lost because he didn't make a continuation bet. And here's a hand that he won, but still, you're steaming because you got no action whatsoever. You won the minimum possible when you look down and find two aces. Played that hand so bad. I can't get over how bad I played that hand. I'm such a bad call in the end. The mouth is mumbling to himself right here. You, you know, you, that, you know, feel you know, you're a winner, but you feel like a loser when that happens. Look at Mattisau, rambling, nonsensical, nothings to himself. Oh, he is a desperate man. Sort of a I don't know, man. Only laugh, wouldn't you say yeah, there, Vince? It's, it's, a, it's a prisoner's <laughs> cackle, if you ask me. It's just a desperate man <laughs> mumbling desperate things. But that's why we love this game so much. It makes you talk to yourself and keeps you coming back for more. Indeed it is. Right, back to the action on Kevin Saul here. He looks down at the King Nine. He's in first position. Still with a ton of chips. And he is going to raise it. Makes it 120,000 to go. Into the human cackle, wow. Mr. Madison. And he's picked up two jacks, another premium hand here, but he opts to just call here with the two jacks. Yep, Danny Wong going out, Shane out. I'm very surprised at that, Vince. He's going to play it slow. That's been his strategy all night long. Yeah. Play the big hand slow, trap, and wait. Good flop for Madison. He's got the over pair as it comes 10 8 3. Kevin checks his flop. And Madison is going to bet 200,000. Wow, Kevin like going that. out. Manithau showing the two jacks there, Vince, and I got to tell you, that puzzles me. Is it two jacks? I knew you had. Because it just makes Kevin more confident in the way that. he's playing. Vince, you just got a sense that Kevin picked up something on Manithau there. Every time tonight, Kevin saw has made the continuation bet when he raised pre-flop. Here, he didn't do it. He checked, and he gave the pot up to Manithau. You just have a feeling he had a hunch that Manithau had a big hand there. Okay, well, the poker's about to get a little more expensive here. The antes and blinds are going up. $5,000 antes, $30,000 and $60,000 blinds. And, Vince, every time the blinds go up, it's like a shot clock in a basketball game when it's winding down. The pressure begins to build. It forces the players to open up their game and become more aggressive. Kevin Saul now looking down at an ace jack. That's a tremendous hand for this guy. And yes, he is going to raise it. Makes it 175,000 to go. The mouth goes away. And now Danny Wong with a jack nine of spades in the small blind. Well, one of those hands you'd like to see a flop with, but Danny opts to lay this one down. 
Right behind him, the maniac Shaniac with an A6. Oh, oh Vance, oh. look at this. He's pulled the trigger for $1.7 million here. All Just in. What the One point five and change. 1.6. Trying to rob this small little pot with a huge overraise. The Shaniac is saying, hey, the blinds just went up to 30 and 60. There's a little something out there already. I could take this pot away with a heavy raise, but I think it man, is. this could backfire because Kevin saw with a pretty decent ace jack, and he's a curious kind of player. No, it's like 1715. Well, Vance, Shane has done this several times, come over the top of Kevin after he raised the pot coming in. You'll recall that earlier in this tournament, Shane made the same move with ace-king. Right. Kevin called that hand with an ace-queen and doubled up Shaniac. That's what Kevin is thinking about. Yeah, definitely part of the equation. Well, that's right now Kevin's in second chip position. But if he plays this pot and loses it, he'll be down to just over a million in chips, far and away in fourth place. Well, usually when they do this, they have a mid-pair or small pair, and they just want to get out fast and not have to see a flop. Or they have an ace and a baby card, which is exactly the scenario right here. Now, certainly you wouldn't really want to race for all this money, would you? You wouldn't think so. You don't have to. But you wouldn't mind playing it if you had your opponent dominated, as is the case here. We're talking about a different surprise money. 1.3 to the winner compared to 232. If you get busted out in fourth... I call. Look at that! He He's made, made the, call. the call. What a it's call right. here by Kevin Saul. Whether or not he wins this pot, folks, wow. The reason why we have a bi-weekly. He made that call with ace-jack. Remember, he made it with ace-queen last time and got burned. This time he read Shane correctly. He picked his man off like an apple on a tree. Good luck, Shane, whatever. You too. He's got the best of it, but you still got to win the pot, Benny. So Kevin Saul, elated at that call, puts the white towel around his neck. Now we know he's a bluffer. He's a thief at the poker table. I wonder if he took that towel from the room, Mike. Well, he can afford it if they charge him for it, but he's still got to use the towel to sweat the flop, and here it comes. <laughs> for Shane to win this pot, he's going to have to get lucky. Here we go, Mike. He's looking for hearts or spades or a six, and he got it. But a jack comes off as well. Both players have flopped a pair. No, that was the reaction. And right now, it's looking very watching. bleak for oh, Shane Schlager. Yeah. He's going to have to catch a six to win the Still pot. Still a hot tub tonight, buddy. Don't worry. He could come king-queen where they would split the pot. So a great flop there for the man that made the outs. call of the night. Kevin yeah. Sol, he's hit his <laughs> pair of jacks. Well, Shane has a two-outer, as we say, to win the pot. He must catch one of two sixes left in the deck to win the pot. He could get the tie if it comes king-queen. Here we go with the turn card. Well, a king comes off. Uh, that's a great so card So this would give him a split if a queen <laughs> came off, which I'm sure he'd love to get out of this. Both players will make an ace-eye straight if a queen came off. Wow. Shane must catch a six to win it. Shaniac the maniac needs some help on the river. Will he get it? Here he comes. Four no. diamonds comes off. Good luck, Dan. Take it down. Shane tried that play on numerous occasions tonight against Kevin. This time, he opted to make the call, and that did it for Shane Schlager. Kevin Saul is now our chip leader. And just like that, we are down to three at Palacio. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action in just a moment. Welcome back to the final table of the Bellagio Cup 3. I am Leila Cayley, and here's what's happened so far. As round two of Bellagio Cup 3 began, the scrappy young internet pro Kevin Saul's cup was soon half empty, after he pulled away his chips to rising star Danny Wong. And while the mouth continued to roar... I might be an idiot, but one thing I ain't gonna do is get punched around. A resurgent Kevin Saul ended Shaniac Schlegger's bipolar tournament ride. Good luck, Kevin. Now three remain. A young rising star, a volatile veteran, and a cocky young internet whiz. All thirsting for a career-defining WPT win and the $1.3 million that goes with it. We are down to three players fighting it out for $1.3 million, and the crowd's still buzzing about that call Kevin Saul just made, Vince. Yes, he knocked out the Shaniac. Shaniac picking up $232,000, and right now, just like that, we are down to three. Kevin Saul with about 4.5, Danny Wong 3.9, and the mouth, Mike Matisau with 2.1. Well, he looks down to suited connectors, the Jack Tana Hearts, and he's going to raise it. Makes it $150,000 to go. And now the Q-tip with an 8-4. He's going to lay it down as well, so Matisau is going to pick up the blinds and annies. Mike Matisau, 
very savvy when it comes to strategy for tournament poker. He understands when the blinds and antis go up, that's the time to start stealing them. He's going to become more aggressive in his three-handed battle and try to pick up more than his share of blinds and antis. Let's see if he does that. The mouth knows what he's doing, an experienced tournament player. He knows he has to change gears. Will he take his first WPT title, you know? He is one of the most respected yeah. tournament players in the world. All his friends have taken titles, and that's what he wants here tonight. Hopefully you two get... All right, it's going to be back on Danny Wong with the button. And Danny, the youngest player at the table, 22 years old, with an 8-3 goes away. Turn to Kevin. He's got a 6-4 in the small blind. He's going to make the call. And now go the ahead. mouth with Queen-4, content to call. Not going to raise. Here we go with the flop. It's come Queen-9-9. Nine, nine. Manisal flopping queens up here, but Kevin Saul leading out and betting with just a six high here. 75,000, and Mattisaw quickly calling him. Yep, not going to raise. Going to play this one slow. Top pair. A 10 on the turn. Well, Kevin's going to check, and Mattisaw checks right behind him. Now a deuce comes off. Nothing no. hitting there for Kevin, but... Well, Kevin reaching for chips here. Knows the only way he could possibly win this pot is to bet at it. But still, when you bet on the flop and a man calls you, even if he had some type of straight draw... The worst he's got here is a pair of 10s. But Kevin is going to bet anyway. 285,000 at the mouth. And you got to think the mouth has to call this hand. All right, kid, you got it. Oh, oh that's I am in shock over this. What Mike Mattisau laying that hand down and then showing the queen. I mean, you have to put your opponent on an over pair, meaning aces or kings, or a third nine to lay that hand down. Well, Mike just put him on a nine. He just gave him too much credit and lays down a pair of queens, showing the cards. Probably thinks he made a good lay down. Makes a horrible lay down. But what it's doing is send a message that these guys can run over him, looks like to me. That's the message he's trying to send him, or he wouldn't have showed him that hand. Yeah, but as we've seen all night, that is the strength of Kevin's aggressive style. He raises so often with any two cards that Mike actually gives him credit for hitting trip nines when Kevin leads out again on the river. I always have a blast playing this game. My greatest poker accomplishment is putting 90% of my opponent's past, future, and present on permanent life tilt because of the way I play. And they tell me what a donkey I am, and I just, I laugh because people don't play good when they're upset. If you agitate them a little bit, they get upset, and they start gunning after you, and you can know that they're gunning after you, and you can play accordingly. And you know, they just start giving you chips. You get it all, man. The next thing you know, the tournament director or the dealer is yelling, seat open, and they're out of the tournament, you got their chips. 4-6 suited is my favorite hand. 4-6 suited is better than aces, I'm telling you all. You have to play it like aces, you just play it that way and people fold. And you just make hands, and it's just the best. I play my cards and I play my opponents, and if I sense weakness, I go after them. Nothing changes now. I mean, this is what we all have been working for. Let's go back down the table. It's going to be on the bluffer himself, Kevin Saul. Human Q-tip. This time looks down to the jack six of diamonds with the button. Well, Vance, right now he's on a heater. He's on a roll. He knows he's stolen a lot of pots here tonight, including that last one off Mattis House. So he is feeling good. Why not raise it up? Makes it 183000 to go with the jack six. Next to act... Mike the mouth. He has an ace five this time. Nice. Well, Vince, he's tired of being pushed around like a mop. He is going to raise it right here with the ace five. Makes it 430,000 to go. Nearly a $250,000 raise. Andy Wong with an ace three getting out of the way. So back on Kevin Saul. He has outplayed Manasau on virtually every pot so far tonight at this final table, it seems like. You look at the intensity on Mike Manasau's face. It's almost like you just want to give him a back rub. <laughs> you know, he just needs a little help here. Yeah. Wants to win this title so bad. Well, he's getting outplayed at this final table. He needs a lot of help. But you got to say, he's going through with his strategy very tight. 430. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Perhaps too long, though. Back on Kevin Saul. Well, man, so far, Kevin's instincts have been right way more times than not at this final table and all week long for that matter he's been the chip leader of this tournament every day he's the chip leader now with three players left 
And you wonder what he's thinking about. Could he possibly be thinking about coming over the top of Manasau here? Well, if he did, Manasau is liable to go crazy. Well, he's just going to call it. So again, he's battling Mike Manasau for the pot, just not giving it up to him. Now, well over $900,000 in the pot right now. And here comes that flop. Oh, it's come King Jack Six. Oh. Kevin saw his flop two pair. Can you believe it? Oh, man. Action's on Mike Matisau. Nothing materializing for him on that flop. Well, we've criticized him before tonight for not making the continuation bet. This time, it could be deadly for him to do so. Poor Hunter. But he is making it. Come on. Kevin quickly goes all in on him with the two pair. Mike Manisau just sick. He has absolutely nothing oh, here. Wow. Gonna have to lay it down. That's it. Well, the mouth is just getting his teeth kicked in. It's a complete horror show for Mike Manisau. We're coming right back for more. Welcome back to Bellagio Cup 3 from Las Vegas. 535 players started out. We are down to three. The current ship leader is Kevin Saul with about 5.5 million, Danny Wong with about 3.8 million, and Mike Matisau on the short stack right now. And there you saw him looking up to the poker guys. Maybe he's praying to them, saying, geez, I better get this thing turned around quick or I'm going to be out of here in third place. All right, actions to him. He quickly folds his hand. And now Danny Wong with a 4-5 offsuit in the small blind. Well, he's going to limp in and make the call. Now Kevin Saul is going to peek down at a queen six offsuit. Let's see if he gets aggressive with his nothing hand. Nope. Wraps it pat. So then we got the battle of the blinds. The two chip leaders going at it. Here comes a flop. The flop comes seven, six, four, all clubs. Danny Wong has flopped a pair and an open end straight flush draw. And it's first to act for Danny. Kevin has got a pair of sixes on that flop. No club in his hand. Now Danny reaching for chips here. And even though Kevin has him beat at the moment, he's actually statistically a favorite to win this hand. And he's going to bet 72000 with the open end straight flush draw and the pair. But Kevin's going nowhere. He has made this call. Kevin with no club in his hand, just the pair of sixes. Here's the turn card, a jack of clubs. So Danny Wong has made the flush, but not a big flush. And you're always fearful that your opponent has a bigger club in his hand when he called a bet on the flop after three clubs were out there. Well, that's a scare card for both players. Danny Wong quickly checking. And now let's see if Kevin, with no club in his hand, will continue this with just a bologna sandwich. Yes, he does. $163,000 bet here. Well, he is going to put Danny Wong to the test here. And we can see he has a flush. But believe me, folks, when you bet on the flop with three clubs out there and another club comes off and you've only got a baby club in your hand, you're fearful that your opponent has a bigger club in his hand. Now he's going to be thinking this through. He's saying, hey, wait a second. After the flop, if this guy had a big club in his hand, wouldn't he re-raise me knowing that he's such an aggressive player? Yes, he might. So maybe a little measly five of clubs is out in front. Danny can put the pieces of this puzzle together and see this hand through to the end. Well, he's going to pick up some major momentum here in the final stages of this three-handed poker game. He's made a great call. Wow, what a call Danny Wong has made here. Let's go to the river. The king of spades comes off. Helps see the player Danny quickly checking. I can't do it anymore. Oh. Well, Kevin says I, I can't club. fire again. You called me on the turn. I'm going to let you have it. And Danny Wong is going to take this pot down with a flush, but give him credit for making that tough call on the turn there. I didn't have the best area to try. With the potential of facing another big bet on the river. He showed tremendous guts right there. I lose more if I raise the flop. And Kevin's talking to himself because he knows if he'd have fired pretty big, it's still going to be a very tough call for Danny to make. Just great, great poker. Big action game here tonight. Mike Mattis had the mouth. With the button. Looks down to the five deuce quickly ejects. Turn yourself on off. Now Danny Wong in a small That's blind looks down at the king ten, opts to make the call. Now usually in a two-handed poker game, battle of the blinds are going to pop it up with king ten, but he elects just to call. And Kevin Saul right behind him, taking yeah. advantage. He with an ace three, he's going to raise. Well, Kevin correctly figuring that his ace high is the best hand right now, so he's oh, going to make it 200,000 more. Well, Danny was just kind of disguising his king ten. Careful what you wish for. Sometimes you get it, and then you don't know what to do with it. 
Well, Danny probably wishing right now he'd have raised it to start with, put his opponent to the guess, rather than him trying to guess as to what to do. Danny, the youngest player at the table, 22 years old, lives in Southern Cal, graduate of UC Riverside, was going to be in the stock market, was going to be a stockbroker, but became a professional poker player instead. Well, Danny Wong is doing it. He's making the call here, wants to see a flop. So the two chip leaders and massive chip leaders going at it. Oh. And what a flop for Danny Wong. He's flopped the top two pair. He has kings and tens. And he checks. And throw Kevin a little rope here. Hoping Kevin will make the continuation bet. Well, when has he not? That is the question. This guy loves to gamble, makes continuation bets left and right. And there go the chips. 350,000. To the delight of Danny Wong. Now, if you're sitting in Danny Wong's seat, you know you're going to play the pot. The question is... Do you just call here, throw your opponent a little more rope, or he might hang himself on the turn, or you go ahead and raise it? I think it's very tough to call here, Vince, and I say that because if his opponent had a queen jack or an ace jack, some type of straight draw, you hate to give him a free card that could beat you. Even if he had two sixes or two sevens, if one of those cards came off, you're going to get broke here. So you would really regret it if you gave your opponent a card that could beat you but then on the other hand, if you do raise, the cat's out of the bag with your hand, basically speaking. And if the guy has nothing, just like Kevin has, you're going to lose him. Danny is going to raise it right here. Obviously, he wouldn't raise if he knew what Kevin had, but 900000 to go. Yeah, figures there's enough in there right now. He's check-raising. He's going to try to get the value out of it. It's a $550,000 raise, and Kevin up from his seat here. Well, Vince, he has not jettisoned this hand. Remember, folks, he just has an ace three. If he's thinking about making a move at this pot for all his chips, this young guy could be heading back to Forest Park, Illinois, before you know it. You yeah, sit back down, Kevin. Don't get too excited. Mike Mass, I would love to see these two clash in a monster pot. He'd love to move up over 300000 in real money and play heads up for this title. He was looking so depressed and now, look, he's pepping up. Yeah. He's going, this could be a $300,000 free roll here. Might just squeak in a second, Mike. <laughs> like I give a <laughs> 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 Anything less than first, I'm going to go kill myself. Promises, promises, Mike. Well, Mike, you're going to have to catch better and play better if you want to take the title from these two guys, I can tell you. About 3.3 .3 behind him? Yeah. Well, Kevin just wants to hear the voice of Danny. Danny not giving him much here. Begging for a call. Is this the implosion that Phil Helmuth was talking to the mouth about? Saying this Kevin will donk off his chips sooner or later. Just wait for him. Well, this could be the opportunity. But the beneficiary here would be Danny Wong instead of Mike. Well, his opponent called a raise before the flop. Check raised him on the flop. Would he do it with nothing, or would he do it on a drawing hand? That's what you've got to ask yourself if you're Kevin Saul. I pass. Well, Kevin oh. is going to lay it down, and a good decision not to make a play at the pot right there, because Danny Wong was probably going to take him down if that happened. And you see, when Kevin said, I'll pass, how uncomfortably that word came out of his mouth. The man just doesn't lay down a hand. He hates that. It was uncomfortable for Danny Wong, too, because, believe me, he wanted him to play for all his money right there. Well, there is thinking and double thinking going on here at Bellagio. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action on the World Poker Tour. Now you can see all the early round coverage of this tournament and every tournament all year long only at WPT on GSN.com. Welcome back to the Bellagio Cup 3. Three players remain. Danny Wong has 5.2 million. Kevin Saul with 4.2 and Mike Matisau is the short stack with about 1.1 million. So the 22-year-old taking the chip lead for the first time in this three-handed battle. Let's see if he can hold on to it. Action's going to be on the mouth. Mike Matisau with the button. He's got an ace seven of hearts. But he just limps in. He does not raise with this hand. Just continues to take the conservative route. Danny Wong with a 6-3 behind him. He is also going to call now Kevin Saul with a king jack. We're going to see three-way action here. And here comes that flop. Queen 9-7. Danny's going to check. Kevin has the gut shot straight draw and checks. And the mouth picking up a pair of sevens there is going to bet 125,000. He's got bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw. So he's going to bet and test the water right here. 
Danny goes out, action's on Kevin. And she just have to wonder what he's thinking about here. He's got the gut shot straight draw. Well, this is the strength of this guy. You just don't know what he's gonna do next. I mean, he could fold his hand. He could just call or raise it. Wouldn't surprise me. In case he comes over the top of Mattisau here, Mattisau's gonna have a hard time calling the bottom pair. He does just make the call. You know, if he'd have raised that, Mattisau would have jumped out of his chair and squirmed. Oh, an ace comes off on the turn, gives Mattisau aces and sevens. And I promise you, a minute ago when he got called, he wasn't happy. Now he's thrilled that his opponent's in there. Well, Kevin has checked, and the chips are going in with more confidence by the mouth. He is betting $300,000. And it's going to work, because Kevin's got to fold the hand. So Mattisau finally taking down a pot here. This seems like Mike Mattisau has a hard time getting chips out of these guys when he's got something, Vince. Seems like they read him pretty well. He's got a hand to get away from it. He hasn't had many. When he doesn't have one, they seem to come over the top of him. And Vince, you know, he's glad just to get on the board against these guys. He's been shut out pretty much in this three-handed battle so far. All right, Danny Wong with the button. He's got a 7-6 offsuit. Got a challenging little hand here. Well, he's in position. He's got the chip lead. He's going to limp in and make the call on the button. And then Kevin Saul now. Young player from Illinois has a jack three of diamonds. Saying, well, if you call on the button, let me call here in a small blind. And Mike Madison with a queen eight. Not going to raise. Three-handed action. So a family pot here. Everybody playing. Oh, what a flop this is. It's come seven, six, three. Danny's flopped the top two pair. But Kevin saw us flop bottom pair and a flush draw. He's going to come out swinging. It's a $100,000 bet with a flush draw. Mike Mattisau quickly folding. And now it's around to the man that has legitimate two pair on the flop, Danny Wong. He get aggressive here right now. Make this guy pay for a draw. Well, Vance, I think you have to. You just can't give your opponent a free card here, I don't think, with potential flush and straight out there. And indeed, Danny Wong is going to raise it 250000 more with the top two pair. Well, he's saying, listen, if you want to draw at this thing, you got to pay for it. Kevin knows the rules considering this. Well, Vance, many players in this situation with a pair and a flush draw would we'll just go ahead and set them all in right here. Well, clashing the two chip leaders right now. This could be a beautiful thing for Mattisau, who's praying for one of these guys to get knocked out. Now, that would be Kevin Saul because Danny Wong has him covered. Danny's our chip leader. When you have a hand like Kevin Saul's wow. here, you're not drawing dead. It doesn't matter what your opponent has. If he's got a set, you can win with a flush. If he's got a bigger flush draw, your two threes are good. He has just called it. And look at this card on the turn. Two pair now for Kevin. Both players have two pair now. Kevin Saul out front with Jackson threes. And there's a $100,000 bet. That's a little tickle bet. That's into a pot that has about 900000 out there already. So indeed a small bet. And it's going to look to Danny... Like the guy just trying to get a cheap card off to make the straighter flush. There's no way that Danny Wong is going to think that Jack of Spade has him beat in his hand. Little does he know he's beat right now. You know, if a diamond comes off or some kind of straight card, or even if the board pairs threes, Danny could put the caution brakes on. But with this card coming out there, I don't see how he can do it. Nope. And indeed, he's coming over the top here with a healthy $600,000 raise. He's going to make it $700,000 to go. Well, that $100,000 bet, very intelligent, just sucking Danny Wong in to make a re-raise. Very well done. 600 more. Remember, these two guys are the massive chip leaders at this table. One's got over $5 million, one's got over $4 million, and Mike Mattisau sitting back in third place with just about a million. Vince, you just can't imagine Kevin's going to get away from this hand with Jackson 3 no. and a flush draw. Yes, he could be beat. His opponent could have a set. His opponent could have flopped a straight. But he knows he's got outs to win. It doesn't matter what his opponent has. And I'll be very shocked if he just called in this situation with this hand. Come on. He's going all in. Now Danny Wong has got to get up and reassess the situation now. He thought he was out front with sevens and sixes, and now he's got to wonder about that, Vince. Hope it gets called. Mattis out standing up as well. He is tickled to death to see this development. Dream come true for him. I call. He calls. Give us race. What do you have? 
sevens and sixes. Look at this. Danny thinks oh. he's out front. Oh, I got him. But he has a diamond draw. He doesn't realize. What do you mean? He's got that Kevin has made two pair on the turn. Oh, shh. Oh, well, he sees him now. Yeah. He's got you dead. Uh, talk about disappointment. Oh, Misread the hand out there. Thought he was out in front with his two pair. Yeah, Matt Danny just thought he had two jacks in the flush draw. Yep. How can he call a bottom two there? Little did he realize that his opponent made two pair on the turn as well as the flush draw. That's 300 grand for me. He is drawing thin, as we say. He's not dead yet, but he must make a full house. Must catch a six or a seven to win this pot and eliminate Kevin Saul from this tournament. Well, he's got four outs for a complete reversal of fortune. Andy Wong stunned here. Just put a face card at the camera. We are going down the river. Face Can he get lucky? Deal. He's staring at the Big board lucky. in disbelief right now. He's looking for a seven. Let's see if he can get it. A six would do it as well. Here's Fifth Street. And there it is, the nine of spades coming off. Kevin Saul. Now the monster chip leader in this three-handed battle. And Danny Wong stunned, Vance. He played so perfectly all night long. He didn't lose all the chips, Vance, but he only has a million dollars left. Sick. Well, it is a hand of destiny for the towel boy, Kevin Saul. Mr. Q-Tip, take it down the biggest pot of the night so far. Will he take our title? Stay tuned. We're coming back for more action here on the World Poker Tour. I think any player that plays professionally and plays the tour wants to get the monkey off his back and win out here on the World Poker Tour. You know, only 18 guys can win a season. Phil Ivey and Phil Helmut. These guys have never won on the World Poker Tour. John Juwanda, considered one of the greatest players alive. Eric Seidel has yet to win. You think of David the Dragon fan. And Johnny Chan. Mike Mattisau. There's some great players that have yet to win out here. And believe me, I don't care if you're a top pro player or you're an amateur player just hoping to strike the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There's nothing more than you want to do than to win out here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to Bellagio. Three players remain in the Bellagio Cup 3. Going after $1.3 million. The Soul Man, Kevin Saul, is out in front with $8.2 million. Mike the Mouth, Mattis out with one3 And Danny, will he ever win the championship? Wong has about $1.1 million. Well, you have to say it's Kevin's tournament to lose now, Vance. He's got such a dominating chip lead over these two guys. He's led this tournament wire to wire at the end of each day. All right, the mouth quickly folding his hand, and now Danny Wong in the small blind with a jack, eight of spades. Well, Danny on the short stack now. 180. But he's going to raise it here, makes it 180,000 to go. Going to try to steal some blind. Kevin still stacking chips. The previous double up. How much did you have left after that pot? No, no. About a million? Okay. Kevin Saul has a wired pair of sevens and says all in. Well, not the words Danny Wong wanted to hear when he's looking down at a jack eight. He's going to lay it down. So the streak continues here for Kevin Saul. This 27-year-old from Forest Park, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. No, it was just up. after the pot, and I'm so stacking, Mike. That's all. you got, you got to take me. I know. It's, it's bad out of I have been. I have been. Oh, oh. man, it's Sal. Making a comment, you can't count the guy down every single pot or ask him what he's got every hand. You Good sense a little jealousy and frustration <laughs> out of Mike Mattisau there. Envious that Kevin Saul is winning all the money right now. Okay, Danny Wong now with the button. He's got a jack seven. He won't play that. Goes out. And now on the currently unpopular Kevin Saul. Looks down at a king five offsuit. And he's yeah. going to call it. Well, Mattisau with the eight six says give us a flop. So here we go. Now flop comes ace jack six with two clubs. Nothing hitting for Kevin. And it's out flopping bottom pair, but Kevin's the one doing the betting here. He bets 85,000. Yep, and Mattis out of the mouth. Hitting a pair of sixes, makes a quick call. Well, just not believing Kevin's got an ace or a jack in his hand because he didn't raise pre-flop. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Kevin slows down with a check. Now, Madison is going to try to get the value bet in here with just two sixes. He bets 100000 That's going to get the job done. So good poker instincts displayed there by Madison by betting bottom pair. Kevin Saul brushing that off. Nothing personal, he's thinking. You can insult me. You can talk to me. You can berate me. But just give me your chips, and I'll be happy. So Madison picking up a little pot there. Yeah, well, that can help your bitterness a little bit. Just win a pot. 
Everything's forgiven. Action's gonna go right back on him. He's got the button. The mouth looks down at a King Jack offsuit. Yeah, he picks up Kojak. Raise. And he is gonna raise it. Makes it 175,000 to go. And now Danny Wong looks down at an ace three of diamonds. He is short stacked at this point. Complete reversal of fortune for this young guy. A couple hands back. I'm all in. He is going all in with it. Saul man now with king three of hearts. Behind him won't play. And now it's back on the mouth. Well, Mike realizes he's Here's got there. more chips than Danny Wong. If he gambles his hand and wins it, he'll be playing heads up for the title. Was if he loses it, he's not out of this tournament. The question is, do you want to gamble with the King Jack in this situation? I call. And he has made the call. Well, Vince, I think he's supposed to make the call here. His opponent could have a small pair. He could be making a move. I put him on ace rag. I had to call. As the cards lie, Danny Wong is a favorite to win this pot. Maybe you can have a Come on. Give even money. And Mike the Mouth, surprisingly confident with his call, saying, I knew what he had. I called it anyway. I knew he had ace rag, man. I just There's 360 in the pot. And believe me, I'm going to get lucky. Well, I don't know why he's so confident, Vince. He's over a three to two underdog to win this pot. So if I was Danny Wong, I'd be feeling pretty good that I had the best of it right here, and I was all in with a chance to double up. It's there, dude. Don't worry. I can see. Trust me. I know. I'm not even worried. I know it's there. It's drawn dead on the flop. Don't worry. The mouth thinks he's going to get there, exuding confidence right now with the inferior hand. Well, a huge pot for both of these players. Danny Wong's tournament life on the line. If Mattisau wins it, we'll be playing heads up for the title. Here's the flop. Flop comes 10, 7, 5. So far, so good for Danny Wong. He's still out in front with the ace high. And the mouth might have to eat his words. Right now, Danny Wong, well over 3 to 1 favorite to win this pot. Fourth street coming up. Got to dodge a king or a jack or two running cars to make a straight. Oh! The jack comes off. Mike Madison has done it. He has spiked the jack on the turn wow. to take the lead. He's saying one time, let it hold up. Just don't let me see a bullet on the river. Just a ridiculously bad card there for Danny Wong, but complete celebration. Mouth can't even watch. He bends over. Well, the ten of clubs comes on the river, and that's going to do it for Danny Wong. I told you. And Mike the Mouth getting hugs from Helmy within his buddies, high fiving. It's all yours, Mike. Let's go. You were the best player at this time. And look at Danny Wong, completely deflated, stunned. I never had a read on you, Kieran. A guy who was just moments ago the chip leader, out now in third really, place. He really played great. And Vince, he doesn't want to leave the arena. He is staggering around here in total disbelief as to what's happened to him. What's up, cuz? What's up, cuz? I told you he's going to need every one of them. Remember that? And you're glad you have them. Because you're going to need them all, brother! Danny Wong thought it was his night, just not to be desperately wanting a recount, but he won't get it. The two trash talkers now are going to go up in the heads-up battle here at Bellagio. We're about to begin, but first, our money presentation. Well, as is the custom on the World Poker Tour, we get down to heads-up play. We have our money presentation. And that is some big bucks right there being dished out on the table by the beautiful Bellagio girls. Mounds of cash, a beautiful bracelet to the winner, a WPT title, and over $1.3 million. Oh, that is exciting, especially if you're Mike the Mouth, who's waited so long to make this final. Will Mike the Mouth Mattisau become our next WPT champion? I got four of those at home. Or will it be the Soul Man, Kevin Soul, who will take this title at 27 years old? We will see the Heads Up Battle about to begin when we come back in just a moment. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. The Heads Up Battle about to begin at the Bellagio Cup 3. Will it be Mike the Mouth? Will he finally be fed a title here on the World Poker Tour? Him against the soul man, Kevin Soul. Both of them fighting it out for $1.3 million and a coveted WPT title. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Why did I know it was going to be me and your head up? I didn't know who I was going to be heads up with, Mike. I knew I'd be heads up with someone. Action's going to be on the mouth with the button. He's picked up a pair of eights. Well, that is a quality mid pair. And yes, he is going to raise. Makes it 135000 to go. I can be your Huckleberry. 
Kevin Saul, with just a 10-5 offsuit, is making this call. A little puzzling call there. Here comes the flop. Yeah, flop comes Jack, four deuce. Kevin quickly checks it, hitting nothing there. But Matisau going to bet 150000 with his eights. Now, you think that would chase away Kevin Saul, but... He's chasing him back to his chip stack, Vince. What is he up to here? Well, he's up to more thievery. At least that's what it appears like. I raise. Whoa. Certainly has no hand and no draw, but he does raise the pot anyway. Well, he's got guts. That's what he has. And it looks like an additional $370,000 with his junk hand. Zip and pip. I'm all in. Wow. Wow, Madison's got the two H's He's going with him. Just doesn't believe oh, Kevin's got two jacks here. Take that. Maybe I shouldn't have been this Huckleberry. Well, Vince, I don't know what Kevin's thinking about now. It's well over a $1.4 million raise. No way he's going to call over $1.4 million with a 10-5 offsuit here. Well, this is just saving face right now. Just wants to send a message to Mike that when I bet I've always got something, don't think I don't have anything. That's why I'm not mucking the hand so quickly here. Well, you like to torture players at the table. You know, you pay for that at the poker table. Wow. You're allowed to do it. Let the man sweat. That's a lot of cheddar. No way he's making this call. <laughs> Look at the mouth. Well, Mike Madison, hoping to get the call here, Vince. I don't like the way he looked at me. And there he's going to fold it. Good hand, Mike. Yeah, nothing? Yeah, it's on high. Yeah, the truth's coming out now. Us internet kids have to keep the aggression up. <laughs> Well, he does keep the aggression up, folks. No doubt about that. It doesn't matter. Whatever he bluffed with was good. I had 10 high. But Mattisau taking down this pot with the 2-8. I had 10-5. I figured, you know, I could make a straight somehow. Well, Vince, his strategy is very simple. He'll give up the small pots to win the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if the strategy continues to work, because there's no doubt in my mind that Kevin's going to not stop raising these pots. I told you, 4-6 suited, just play it like you got two jokers. There you go. Whatever the best hand is, play it however you'd play that hand. And then hope the other guy doesn't have nothing. The gems are coming out. I didn't have 4-6 suited there. A couple good yappers at the table here tonight. If it's going to be on Kevin Soul, he has a jack nine this time. Well, certainly that's going to be good enough for him to raise it. He pops it up, makes it 170000 to go. He just plays power poker, and now it's on the mouth. Mike Manasau, he has ace six this time. Well, Vince, when you're playing heads-up poker, if you have an ace in your hand, there's a 90% chance that your opponent doesn't have an ace in theirs. Well, he has just called this right now. And here's our flop. Seven, six, three. Again, Manasau with the best hand. He's got two sixes. And he's going to come out to bet $200,000. But just like that, Kevin with just... Jack High is going to call it. Well, with no hand and no draw, Vince. <laughs> He's calling here to try to steal this pot later on. Let's see if that strategy works. Mattis House checked on the turn. And incredibly, Kevin checks right behind him. Going to the river here. Oh, a jack on the river. It hits Kevin. Oh, wow. Well, Mattis is going to bet two sixes. Thinks he's got the best hand right now, Vince. This that is a value bet by Mattis Al. 200,000. What a beautiful card here for Kevin Saul. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. I raise. Wow. 500 more. He is raising a half a million dollars here with a pair of jacks, folks. Now, you talk about value raising. That is incredible to me that he would make this play. And I say because what's he going to do now if Mike comes over the top of him for all his chips? And Madison, I'm not showing his best poker face right there. Just giving the way. Just giving it away. How much? 500 more? Madison has yet to muck his hand. I make a good check on the turn or a bad check on the turn? He may be thinking about calling us with two sixes. He puts his opponent on oh. a straight draw or something. He may make the call, but no. I went for a sick value bet. Rivering a pair. He lays it down. So I made a bad check on the turn. Well, Vance, I got to tell you, I'm puzzled with the way Kevin played that hand. He called on the flop with no hand and no draw. He didn't try to steal the pot on the turn, and then he raised on the river when he paired the jacks with so many hands that could beat him. Incredible to me the way Kevin played that pot. Two players remain at the heads-up battle here at Bellagio Cup number three.
Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Have you got what it takes to be a WPT champion? Find out at WPT on GSN.com. My trap worked. He's only got four outs. This guy's going home. Come on, Nine. Sometimes making the right move isn't enough, but there's always another hand. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton along with Vince Van Patten, and we're in Las Vegas for Bellagio Cup 3, where we're down to a heads-up battle. And what crafty play we have seen all night long by the young Kevin Saul. He's got about 8.5 million in front of him. Mike the Mouth Matisau starting to mix up his game very nicely, has about 2.1. After I double through him in a minute, there'll be action. Let's go back down to the felt. It's going to be on Kevin Saul with the button. He's got an 8-7 in his hand of diamonds. He's led this tournament wire to wire at the end of the day. Right now in great shape to take this title, but at one point... He went from the massive chip leader down to sixth place, and here he is with the overwhelming chip lead in this heads-up battle. Raises this up to 175,000 to go. And Manasau quickly calling him with the 6-3 of clubs here. Manasau just wanting to catch a flop one time, try to double up and get back in this thing. All right, we're gambling now. Here's our flop. Well, flop comes nine, four deuce. Manasau with the gut shot, straight draw checks. Yeah, he yields to Kevin. Kevin. Nothing hitting for Kevin. Kevin Saul with just the eight high. Going to make the continuation bet here. I'm all in. 300,000. Oh, Mattisau says, I'm all in. Well, perfect timing for Mattisau to do that because his opponent only has eight high. With the inside it straight draw. Well. And Mattisau shows him the bluff here the first time he's done that tonight. My eight high was the bust in. All right. The mouth opening up wide. He's going to change gears. Take it to Kevin. And I had a flush draw. Looks like he's starting to make a stand here in a statement that, look, I'm tired of you pushing me around. I'm going to start pushing back a little. He's going insane, though. And Vince, he's going to need a few more of those kind of plays to take down this title. And the antes and blinds are going up. $10,000 antes. Good damn, Mike. Blinds going to be forty and 80000 So much on the line for both of these guys. Both desperately wanting to capture a WPT title. If you play out here on the tour, that's what you want. Let's go to Mike's hand. He's got an A7 offsuit this time with the button. Is it? And he's going to raise. Well, this time he raises with the A7. Makes it 240,000 to go. And now Kevin looks down at an awful nine deuce. Double down. Look at this. He's going to surrender that hand. No, well, not playing blackjack. So he mucks his hand and Mattisau picks up the pot. Mattisau trying to creep back into this thing. 535 players started. He's down to these two gentlemen. And Vince, I'll tell you, very rare a guy leads a poker tournament at the end of day one, at the end of day two, at the end of day three, and at the end of the final table. But that could happen tonight if Kevin Saul takes down this title. He'll have accomplished that feat. Oh, wow. He's got a huge hand. Pair of ladies, pair of queens, the Hilton sisters. What a time to get him. Well, this is the beauty of poker for an aggressive player. Nobody ever puts him on a hand, and when he picks one up, maybe he'll get paid off some big bucks. Let's see. Well, he is going to raise it, not going to slow play the Queens. Comes in for 220000 oh, Realizing it would be suspicious if he didn't raise. And now it's on the mouth, and he's got a suited connector, 8-7 of clubs. Well, he's called it. It's the kind of hand that if he hits this flop, he's got a good chance to double up with it. Look at this flop. It's a 10-6-5. Wow. Mattisau has flopped an open end straight flush draw and checks. And he has checked it. What a huge drawing hand he has. And Kevin Saul with the over pair of the two queens. Folks, buckle up. You're going to see some sparks fly in this spot. Oh, Ape, where are you? Well, Kevin sang a little bit. Before he puts in 385000 And look at this. Mattisau says all in. Where's and he gets a quick call with the queens. Oh, wow. Put in a straight flush draw, baby. I'm going to put it all in. I'm going to put it all in 15 twice. I don't give a <laughs> point. But I don't care. I'm putting it all in with that hand, baby. Well, Mattisau happy to get his money in. So did I. But when you he knows all... that he doesn't have the best hand right now, but that he's the mathematical favorite to win this pot. Even though I have the best hand right now, 
He's got nine clubs. Well, Kevin understands also that Mattisau is a slight favorite to win this pot. Put my money in the favor, baby. That's all. You're the favorite, Mike. You got your money in good. It's about 56% to 44%. I want him drawn dead on the turn, please. Oh, look at this. Mattisau, the mouth. Exuding confidence. What are you worried about? I know it's going to be there, please. Just so confident he's going to hit it on the turn and become our new chip leader. He is dancing. He it's is... over on the turn. I'm not even going to have to sweat. Oh, wow. I'd love to bottle that. Come on, everybody. Let's go. He'd love to hit double up and become our new chip leader. If Mike Mattisau wins this spot, these guys will be virtually tied in chip counts. He can't win. He's the unluckiest guy in poker. Kevin, like my hand. with the borrowed towel from Bellagio, of course, over his shoulder. That has been his lucky towel here tonight so far. Well, there's the turn card. Not good for Mattisau. Well, three of diamonds comes off on the turn. I'm like 60. Mattisau now the underdog, about a two-to-one underdog to win this pot. He must catch a club, a four, or a nine. And the Saul man can't even watch. He turns to his parents. As the fate card comes up, what will it be? It's a king of diamonds. That's going to do it. Kevin Saul is our champion. I didn't have to play a big pot with him, but he's aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And I, I, you would have played the big pot there. It don't make a difference. You have to. And Ben, he's gone wire to wire. He's led this tournament at the end of each day. Kevin Saul. $1.3 million richer. I can't believe I didn't win. I'm in shock. And that's going to do it. The 27-year-old from Forest Park, Illinois, walks away as a WPT champion. Honest to God, I mean, Kevin played good. He, I mean, I've never seen anybody go wire to wire in any tournament since. Uh, I couldn't even tell you. So uh, I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, me, I'm uh, I, pretty devastated because I don't care about the money. I, I wanted to win so bad, and and um, I really thought that there was no way a club or a four or nine wasn't going to come. So <laughs> I'll, I'll get over this sometime soon. Mike Matisau, runner up. Well, Kevin, Mike said it a moment ago. You're one of the few guys in the history of the World Poker Tour that's gone wire to wire. You got to be proud of yourself for that achievement. Man, it's just, it's pretty much surreal right now. I, I just, this is my first live win. This is, this is the vindication for me, the, the proof that I belong in the, in the live arena. And, uh, and I just, I think my, my phone has vibrated about 84 times. Let's hear it for the champion of Bellagio Cup 3, Kevin Saul. For Layla Cayley, Vince Van Patten, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters.